This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Connor O'Gara is with us from Saturday Down South. We appreciate your time on a Monday, Connor. How'd you enjoy the Super Bowl last night? I I enjoyed it. It it was it checked so many boxes. I mean, it got off to a pretty slow start, but you know the the way that it played out in the second half and with with overtime. I mean, good halftime show, commercials. I thought were decent. Like overall, I mean, I was I was entertained. If you're not going to have a dog in a fight, just just keep me you know keep me entertained. And I I think that it it did exactly what I could have possibly hoped for. Hey, give me a give me a, a a comp to Christian McCaffrey because I think he's the best running back in the game right now. I don't know for how long, but who is there anybody he reminds you of, like a Marshall Falk or uh, who, who who do you compare him to? Because man, he does he does just a little bit of everything. Yeah, that's a good one. That, that's a really good one. It, it doesn't feel fair to just call him a running back, and that's been the case. I mean, going back to when he he kind of broke out at Stanford during that 2015 season, a year that. A lot of people felt like he should have earned the Heisman Trophy instead of Derrick Henry. I could push back on that a little bit, but hey, he's unbelievable. And, and you're gutted for the guy that he is part of this, you know, this team that came up just short because we know the the shelf life for running backs. But you know, I do kind of wonder, like, you see some of the hits he takes with, with the way that he gets the ball in space sometimes. It's like, man, I, I don't know how much that guy is going to have left because he takes a beating, and he's tremendous after contact. I think they said on the broadcast, he's like second in the NFL in rushing yards after first contact. In addition to having a great offensive line blocking for him, but yeah, I don't, I don't know if there is a true modern comp like what he is. I, I think Marshall Falk is a pretty good one, but man, if you can get a Christian McCaffrey on your team in this day and age, like you're just you're set up for for so much success. Well, I don't think we know who to favor outside of maybe these two teams for next year. Um, why do you think? So we've had we have we have a, a string of success with the Chiefs right now. Um, who do you compare the Chiefs to in college football in terms of the amount of success they've had recently, and 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 what can happen moving forward? Because I mean, we talk about the Chiefs. I didn't realize until Matt told me they've got the youngest defense in in uh, of a Super Bowl champion ever. College football is different because you got to keep the the talent moving in here. I mean, do we go with Georgia? Was last year just sort of a one-off for not making the playoff? Yeah, I think it's Georgia. And, you know, a Bulldog did catch the game-winning touchdown, uh, Mikko Hardman. Um, so I, I think that's fitting. I, I was, you know, texting with some Georgia friends who were like, hey, that's a, that's a third consecutive Georgia national championship. We're going to count that. Um, yeah, that, that's that's got to be the, the calm because – you know, Georgia has a really good opportunity to win three out of four. And everybody's going to be talking about the Chiefs, whether or not they can three-beat, just like we were talking about with Georgia coming into this year. A lot of that, too, with the Chiefs is going to depend on if they can get Chris Jones in free agency, the former Mississippi State star. If he comes back and, you know, doesn't decide to, to go elsewhere, one would think that would make a lot of sense. But, yeah, I mean, it is Georgia. That's kind of the, the lazy cop. But the difference between those two is that Andy Reid feels like, okay, he's got two, three more years, maybe. And Kirby, the questions about his longevity are associated to the nature of the sport, but not really associated with his actual age. So maybe Georgia is set up for, for even more long-term success, despite the fact that they obviously don't have Patrick Mahomes at age 28. Hey, Connor, with uh, with Chip Kelly going to Ohio State, I, I, I do like that running back from Ole Miss they got. I, I know Texas has a really good good running back as well. Um, and, and Ole Miss kind of winning the, the portal in uh, in the SEC. Has o- Ohio State, w- did they win the portal this time, this year, uh, in all of college football? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Ohio State is in a really weird situation where this, does now feel like a title or bust season for Ryan Day. And, and that's a strange thing to say about a college football head coach who, oh, by the way, only has eight losses. I mean, and let's think about that. That is wild to, to process. But with the Chip Kelly move, which is really, really beneficial for Ohio State to have Chip Kelly instead of Bill O'Brien calling plays for that offense, in my opinion. But to, to be able to bring in somebody like him with the talent that they have coming back on the offensive side of the ball, yes, it, it is a title or bust type season. To go out and get a clinch on Judkins from Ole Miss is so important, especially in that conference, too, where you look at these 
mid-November games and it's colder weather and you're, you're just trying to lean on, on your backs as much as possible. And I think Chip Kelly is going to be able to really do that because they do run the ball a lot in his offenses. So, yeah, I, I think that Ohio State is set up to have one of these very rare title or bust type seasons, which we don't really talk about unless it's repeating or like Georgia trying to three-peat this past season. I think of any, all of the reasons that somebody might want to move from Southern California around Westwood to Columbus, Ohio. It's like, well, it's a lot, it's a lot less expensive to live in Columbus. I think it's be. Hey, Kelly was making what six million dollars at the at UCLA. It's it's actually difficult to find houses that are uh, that aren't too expensive in that are not like an hour away from UCLA in that case. Um, but the, the dude took a four million dollar pay cut. Connor, you know, I mean, it's not like he's not going to have a lot of pressure on him, but he's going to go to a place in the same league where they're just in a heck of a lot of a better situation than UCLA. I don't know if I've ever seen anything like this before. No, but you have to understand the dynamics. He was a lame duck coach. They, if they had been able to, to get the, the proper funding, everybody was talking about how he was going to be fired this past November. And then he stays on board when Dante Moore, the five-star freshman quarterback transfers after, after one year, that's when the alarm bell started going off for everyone. But the, the reality that he was facing is someone who doesn't like to recruit and has really not been shy about that in this world where he's a lame duck coach. He looked at this as trying to control his next step. And there were reports that he was even willing to, to take that Iowa offensive coordinator job, which would have been incredible if Kirk Ferentz in this entire process to replace his son ends up with Chip Kelly, but obviously that didn't happen. Yeah, you have to understand like the, the dynamics at play, and it's a unique situation because Chip Kelly obviously is very well off and has made a lot of money in this profession, but it's just about someone who wanted to control his next step and felt like his destiny was kind of already made for him at UCLA if he had stayed. Hey, Connor, uh, with the NFL Combine coming up, the draft, I think it's pretty clear uh, with, with Drake May and Caleb Williams as, as kind of one, two. I don't know in what order you have them in. But who, who could be somebody that's like a late riser, somebody that's not this one and two, uh, your Anthony Richardsons, uh, your Will Levitts? Uh, h- how do you see is, – is there somebody that you that you got on top of mind? I'm not sure that Drake May is going two overall because of Jaden Daniels. I think that – what he has done this past season is uh, beyond uh, what I certainly thought was possible, what a lot of people thought was possible, even LSU people. I mean, I think there is a legitimate conversation about whether or not he could be the second player taken off the board. And I know Mel Kuyper Jr. had him as his number two overall pick. And you look at the things that he does well and how that could play in today's NFL where there's more quarterback run game involved. You give your quarterback a little bit more freedom to do those things. Like his ability to process, it was so unbelievably high. And the way that we saw him take that next step this past year was what said to a lot of NFL people, this guy gets it and he can run a highly successful NFL offense. Now it's quarterback, so it's still all about whether or not th- these teams fall in love with you. But I mean, Jaden, I-, I think checks so many of those boxes. And if he ends up being that number two overall pick, just behind maybe my Bears taking Caleb Williams, I, I don't think you should be considered a, a stunner with how good he was this past season. Let's wrap up on a thought on uh, the situation at Alabama with Ryan Grubb, who had followed Kalen DeBoer from Washington to Alabama, is now headed back to Seattle, but as the Seahawks offensive coordinator. I mean, this had to have just come out of left field, no matter if DeBoer and Grubb are, are great friends and work together all these years. Uh, there's no way that he would have brought him over to Alabama if he thought he was going to leave for any other job. And uh, it's wild because they had to do everything they could to keep some of those kids staying there. And now I think the portal is closed and they're looking for a new OC. So I don't think it came out of left field at all. I, I think this was always on the table. I think even mm-hmm. when he brought him over to, to Alabama, I think there was a possibility that if one of these jobs at the NFL level coveted him, uh, then he could go for it. And, Look, the reality is, is that while those two are synonymous, I mean, they've been together for so long, basically since DeBoer decides in 2007, handing an offensive line coach and assistant strength and conditioning coach and an equipment manager at, at Sioux Falls. Like, they've been together for, for that long and they've been mostly, you know, going to each other's, you know, wherever each other's has gone, they've followed one another. But the reality is, he was always going to have to replace Ryan Grubb. 
if Ryan Grubb was good at Alabama, he was going to get a bigger and better job. And so you're having to do this process earlier than you thought you would. You're trying to establish your offense, your one, what that was going to look like, and trying to win some people over who are admittedly skeptical of an outsider like like Kalen DeBoer. But he was always going to have to make a move like this. And if he was going to succeed at Alabama, it was probably going to be because he found ways to score a lot of points without Ryan Grubb running his offense. So it, it'll be really interesting to see which direction they go. But it's a setback. It's definitely a setback because Ryan Grubb is really, really good at his job. Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use our promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V. For your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts.